Welcome to Lotherton Hall on Friday the 2nd of November 2012 for an interview with Adam White, the curator, and Hannah Sutcliffe, author of the 1998 booklet Chinese Ceramics at Lotherton Hall. Oh, it's quite amazing to be back. It really is. When did you first become aware of the Chinese ceramics at, at Lotherton Hall? I came up to look at the lovely house the Gascoigns yeah. lived in. And coincidentally, my eye was caught by the wonderful right. collection in the gallery. This case is absolutely full of the period from 618 to 906 AD in China, the golden, glorious Tang Dynasty. And first of all, trade, commerce with the camel on the Silk Road, that was absolutely vitally important for transport in and out of China, trade with Central Asia, money, luxury objects, all sorts of things came into China. And out from China came tea and much more silk. The little groom here was sometimes taken into China as slaves for entertainment, amusement, not just by the imperial family, but also by the very wealthy upper classes. He would have been a little northern Indian, perhaps from Gandhara, Taxila, that part of the world. He could have been a little Soptian, but because of his curly hair, he's probably more a southern. Um, beautiful jewellery, dressed in the way the southern Indians did. And the horse, the transport. Perhaps you have to be very wealthy to have horses in China, in the Tang Dynasty. The horses, came into China from the tribes of the north, the nomads, bred them, came down to central Xi'an, Chang'an, and there in the market they were sold. The emperors uh, owned, can we call them spies? They were people who were basically servants of the emperor. They would choose the best of the newly imported horses that came straight down from the big steppes in the north and they would end up in the emperor's stables for entertainment, hunting, war, all sorts of issues. There would be up to 100,000 or more horses in the emperor's stable. And the ones not so good were sold in the markets to anybody who could afford them. When you die, you have to have with you transport, things for commerce and trade in your tomb. So the only way you could do it in a, can we call it, a civil way was to have images in ceramics, bronzes, inside the tomb in mortal form. In ancient times, you would have had real servants. They would have been killed. You would have had real camels, perhaps. You certainly had real horses who were killed by the hundreds to be taken to the tomb. And that was a waste. So over the centuries, right back from the Han Dynasty and before the Terracotta Army, they made models. And these were taken into the tomb. That's how you get the Those were tomb. the things you would use in the afterlife. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Anyway, you see so, northern earthenware, and because it was quite cheap, um, they literally painted it all with white slip. And on top of that, they got a very good painter to paint images from classical China, wonderful floral scrolls, and these quite fine paintings in iron black were the beginning of painting on ceramics. It was laid on, lifted on to the blue and white, jing jing jing. And they even said that some of the painters from the north was taken down to South China uh, after or during the Yuan Dynasty. This is an exceptional piece that it's got such fine quality painting on it. And it's signed as well with a painter. This gallery is made out of three servants' rooms, uh, the old servants' hall, the housekeeper's room, uh, and the brushing room, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be returned to that use. Today we wanted to take this last opportunity to film the Oriental Gallery, which has been in place for 37 years. In March, we'll be able to welcome everyone back to a new space, where the servants' quarters are reinstated and many of the oriental ceramics are re-displayed around the house.